Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by today. This is Sandy from Color Creatively. And I want to talk today about solvents for blending. For blending colored pencils that are oil-based, colored pencils that are wax-based or other wax-based pencils, and oil pastels. So, I want to give you a little bit of background before we start here, just a quick history note, which is sort of important to our discussion today. And I wrote it down here, but I want to read it. Um, I want to say that before the 20th century, the pre-20th century, and uh, starting in the Renaissance onward, um, your famous artists like Michelangelo and Rembrandt and da Vinci and whoever they are that lived at that time used um, plants, flowers, and leaves, and they would extract by pressing the oil out of them. And so for hi in history, they use these for uh, thinning paint, uh, blending, and whatever they needed to do with their art. But then in the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution came along, and men who owned huge factories decided that they could make a lot of money by taking these plants, and instead of extracting the uh, oils, uh, the old-fashioned way where, where they only had a small amount of plants available and a small amount of oil, they could mass-produce uh, the plants, grow them on large farms, and then have machines to extract the essential oil. But unfortunately, to distill the oils in the machines, they needed to use some chemicals. And so that's where we got into trouble with uh, toxic uh, solvents. Okay, that's really a very, very quick, quick, unbelievably short talk about the past and history. Well, I want to take a look now at some of the solvents that I'm going to show you. And I've made some notes here. And um, first we have turpentine, which I don't have to show you, but we have odorless mineral spirits. Uh, you'll also know that as Gamsol, which is the same exact thing. This one is a, is marketed to artists, and um, it is at a high price. This bottle cost me almost $10, and this one was less than 3 or $3 maximum. Okay, so this is what I've used for years and years, and not thinking about the toxicity of it or anything. Uh, one of the things that turpentine and odorless, min excuse me, mineral spirits were good at was evaporating and not leaving any residue on your pit, your art, whether it was oil painting or other types of art. But um, and the turpentine was originally uh, pressed from fir trees, pine trees, cypress trees. It was the sap of these trees. But where we go wrong is the um, industrialization industrialization of them and um, uh, the way that they're produced. Okay, um, that's my notes. Okay, let's just talk off the top of our head here. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you, which will be good for all of these, is... Zestit Pencil Blend. Now this is something new to me and um, I had to order it. I'm in, living in the U.S. so I had to order it from the U.K. but I got it from Jackson Art and you can go on the internet and put in Jackson Art and you'll be able to buy it through them cheaper than on Amazon and I also the shipping was much less so um, let me tell you a little bit about Zestit. Okay, Zestit is good. It comes in this, we have this sponge container where you can pour your solvent and it's a handy with no spill, no mess. And this one here happens to be citrus fragrance and it's lovely. But you can also get this in odorless, which is still a non-toxic product. Now, let me get my notes out here. I gotta go through the types of oils they are. But let's talk about Zestit for a minute. It's made from citrus oils. It's non-toxic. It's non-flammable. And they do dilute it with a 
with another non-toxic solvent because you couldn't put just like orange juice in here. Um, but they claim that this is also non-toxic. What it is and all the details of it, I am not totally sure, but I take their word at it. This is good for blending your wax pencils, oil pencils, oil pastels, crayons, graphite, and uh, you can use a brush or tortillion or a stump. Okay, um, so I have the one with the citrus fragrance. I love fragrance. Being in the skincare industry and being licensed as an esthetician for so many years, uh, part of the luxuriousness of getting a massage or a facial is fragrance, except for those people that cannot tolerate it. And that's why Zest It comes in an odorless, which is still fine for you to use. So if you live in the U.S., please go to jacksonart.com and order it, and um, that's where you can get that. Right now, this is the one I'm using. It blends the same as the odorless mineral spirits or the Gamsol, and I love using a paper stump or a tortillion. I'm not good with the brush at it, but either way, you find the way that works for you. Okay, what else did I want to say about that? That was all on the Zested. Okay, the next thing I want to show you that is considered non-toxic is terpenoid natural. Now, there is a terpenoid, which is not non-toxic, and then there's the terpenoid natural. And this comes in, um, well, let me go through this first. Let me get my little paper out here about this. I printed this off the internet. Um, I did go onto the internet and look up material safety data sheets on all these products that I'm going to show you. And uh, that is a legal requirement that uh, business or industry must produce in order to um, have information available in depth about their products. It's a re governmental requirement. This is a gentle, effective brush cleaner. It's non-toxic, it's non-flammable, it, it can be used as a painting medium, probably for oil paints, it, and it has no vapor or harmful um, odors. It rinses up with uh, water, and it's safe for artists of all ages. So in a minute, I'm going to show you a little test that I did with this and some of the other products today in blending, um, but... I know there are people that use this for blending, too. So that is another non-toxic alternative. So those two are, are two non-toxic toxic alternatives. I can't talk today. Okay, terpenoid also comes in an odorless terpenoid. However, I have a question mark. Did they use chemicals to make it odorless? So I'm not sure about this product. I think the odorless one may be toxic. Although it, and it does not say here on this sheet that it is not toxic. It just says it's an excellent solvent and it probably would work better than the natural, I think. But I'm not sure because I have not tested that. Okay, so uh, on the odorless one, you might want to take caution with that. Okay, the next thing that I want to show you is spike lavender oil. Now, this is an essential oil, and that means that this is 100% pure. Spike lavender means this is a specific species of the lavender plant. And these top parts here, the uh, flowers, is what this is made out of. Okay, this is uh, used in aromatherapy. It's mixed with other essential oils. It's used for um, uh, all types of skin care, hair care. Uh, they're telling you here that um, if you want to put it on your body, you need to mix it with on a carrier oil. We'll, we'll get to those in a minute. Um, I have blended with this, and let me show you. Well, I guess I should go there for, I'm, I'm sort of mixed up what way to go today. This was the Zested, and I didn't do blending on camera because um, 
I just didn't want to get all this mess out. It was sort of messy. Um, I forgot to blend that one with the zested, but it does blend the blue color and the red color perfectly. And it's uh, citrus or odorless. The spike lavender now has a strong fragrance, but it's beneficial and the strong fragrance will not harm you in any way. And it is non-toxic if mixed, you know, well, what I say if mixed, it's non-toxic. It's an essential oil. Uh, so if fragrances or odors don't bother you, then this one can work. This is what the uh, Renaissance artists used when they um, did all of their oil painting work and art all through history. They used spike lavender. Now, I did try lavender oil itself, which is different. It's from a different species of plant. You can see by the biological name there. Uh, and this one did... Uh, also, blend very well, uh, and it has a medium fragrance, so it blended these very nicely. And then I also used a rosemary. Now, rosemary and spike lavender were the two oils used during the Renaissance period. And uh, the rosemary has a medium fragrance. Uh, it's not odorless. Um, this one I bought to put in to um, some uh, castor oil and jojoba oil, and I'm going to use that as a hair treatment to thicken hair. So that's just an FYI. And the rosemary blended well. The other thing that blended very well was the lemon oil, 100% lemon oil. Now, this is food grade. You could put this in some cookies and make lemon cookies. Um, but it also works as a great medium. Now, this fragrance most people might like. It's just smelling like a fresh lemon. Um, I think that was not, and it wasn't that strong. Okay, Turpinoid Natural has no fragrance but it was a little harder to blend this. And as you can see, it's still oily here because I got, I put a little extra oil trying to blend it and it didn't work. So I'm not sure, I've only used it on this type of paper, which is mixed media paper. I don't know how it would work in a coloring book. So if you have turpinoid, you might wanna try that at home. So let's move on here. Um, and for those of you who do not know what oil pastels are, this is a children's um, junior artist set. Actually, these are used by adults also. They're just because they're marketed with a with this. They are no different than the Craypos uh, uh, oil pastels for adults, and they were a lot cheaper. But they're sticks of color, and when you spread them on, they're oil based. Okay, so in order to really use these, you must blend them. And so that's what the uh, solvents are for also. Um, they don't dry, but once you use a solvent over it, it becomes uh, where it does not smear anymore. It, it looks beautiful on your picture. And in the near future, I plan on using oil pastels in some of our color books. So stay tuned for that. Don't know when it will be. Okay, there. Um, now let's get into the types of oils. These I showed you were essential oils. They evaporate just like the gamsol and the turpentine, uh, the mineral spirits, and that's the big feature of them. These are non-toxic to the skin, these essential oils here, like the spike lavender. There's no, these fumes are not, the fragrance is not toxic, and they're used in aromatherapy in many salons. So these essential oils, the lemon, the lavender, the rosemary, and the spike lavender uh, would all uh, be non-toxic, and they do blend well on your, um, with your colored pencils. Okay. There's non-drying oils, which are your olive oil, your baby oil, and, and baby oil is basically mineral oil and vegetable oil. Now, I want to say something about this. A lot of people will blend with a baby oil or a Vaseline their um, pictures. You have to make sure you don't get too much of the baby oil or it will stain your 
picture. I've had that happen in the past. Uh, same with the Vaseline. Here's the thing about these two products that I wanted to share with you. And I did some in, uh, investigating into them. First of all, let's do the baby oil. It says here pure and gentle, and you would put this on your baby. And it says mineral oil and fragrance. That's all that's in it. And for years and years, people have used these two items on their young children and maybe your own body. But I got the material safety data sheets printed off of the Internet. And these are, are required in industry as a manufacturer of a product. And it's several pages long, each one, and there's a lot of scientific detail. So I'm just going to make it short for you. These are products from petroleum or gasoline, basically. And they've been refined and distilled and whatever they have to do to them. Now, on the baby oil here, uh, which I didn't like the idea that that's what they're made from. Okay, on these material data safety sheets, it talks about skin irritation, eye irritation. But other than that, all the important information about toxicity, toxicity says it's not available. No, no data is available on the product itself. So I'm taking that to mean that this product, baby oil, has not been thoroughly tested for anything. And I'm not saying it's toxic, but I am saying that it's made from petroleum, and I'm, I'm hesitant about putting this on my body or the Vaseline. And the same with the Vaseline may cause skin irritation or um, eye irritation. So, and, and the other factor in this is that these two oils do not dry. Now, you might use a tiny bit of them, but they are always in your paper. They will not dry. And that's where I want to go next with the non-drying oils. So I'm not using those as solvents for my colored pencils. And I have tried those in the past, and I have not liked it. Some people use vegetable oil, olive oil. These do not evaporate, and they solidify with time. So it may take years, but that eventually that baby oil and Vaseline will solidify in the paper. Okay, then there is a thing called drying oils, which are walnut oil, linseed oil, flaxseed oil, and they're used to put into oil paint. So that's not what we want to use either. They do dry, they don't evaporate, but they become hard and they form a solid state, and that's why with time. So that's why they're used in oil painting. So this is out for colorists in color books, I feel. The non-drying, the baby oil, or the Vaseline is up to you if you want to use it or not. But personally, um, as I saw the material safety data sheets saying no data available, I take it that these products have never thoroughly been tested. And we have all many foods and drugs and other items, beauty items, on our shelves in our stores that have never been tested. So it's not a controlled industry. It's not a um, regulated industry is what I want to say. So the best oils is your essential oils, which the ancient artists used in times past and which we have available today. And then we can go one step further and have Zestit or Terpenoid available to us that are... Um, and made in the modern factories that are non-toxic, okay? Like I said, the terpenoid without odor or the, I'm not sure if that's non-toxic, but this one is. Okay, um, I'm going to show you too, a little bit later, more of my um, blending there with it. Okay, so here, let's wrap this up. Zested would be my number one choice. Uh, even though it's mixed with a solvent that is uh, guaranteed by the manufacturer, and there is a material safety data sheet from the UK that you can print off the Internet. I didn't do it. Um, I've printed so much I ran out of ink, but it's not necessary. Um, I still would, any of these, I would not get my hands wet in them. I would not 
sit there and sniff the bottle. Just use them in a regular way. And if you're using them with a brush, always, or a stump, always put the lid back on. Don't let it sit there to evaporate more because this does evaporate. Okay, my second choice would be Spike Lavender, even though it has a very strong smell. I think that it blended more uh, better than about anything else. Let me see what I did with my papers here. Let me check out what, I, here they are. Okay, and you probably can't tell the difference here on my paper, but I could when I was doing it, and I just didn't want to demo all of this messy stuff. So it just, I mean, this looks beautiful. i sorry I forgot to do that. Uh, and this looks beautiful. And the rosemary is also good. So that would be my third choice would be the rosemary. And the lemon oil would be my fourth choice. For me, turpenoid would be fifth. But that's just me, and that's on this paper. I did find it a little harder to blend. It did blend, but it was harder to blend, and it could have been the paper. I am not sure. The great thing about this is it's non-toxic, and there's no fragrance. So moving on, uh, for me, I will not use baby oil. I'm not going to use Vaseline. These are petroleum-based uh, oils that do not dry and can potentially damage your uh, coloring book. Odorless mineral spirits, I'm not going to be using that anymore, or, or turpentine, and no mineral oil, which is what baby oil is, and no petroleum-based products. So, what am I left with? I'm left with Zestit, or these um, uh, essential oils, spike lavender, rosemary lemon, or the terpenoid natural. And for me right now, I'm really happy with the, with the effect I can get on blending with the Zestit. Okay, now when I say baby oil, I forgot to tell you something about baby oil. Instead of using Vaseline or baby oil, and this is sort of an FYI, uh, on your baby or your own body, you would do better and safer and more healthy for your skin if you used, and sorry, I have a small bottle, jojoba oil, cold-pressed, unrefined, 100% pure and organic, and or almond oil, 100% pure, cold-pressed, and unrefined. This brand is awesome, Fine Vine. They have many oils like that, and I am getting a bottle from Fine Vine, a big one, of the jojoba. This jojoba oil is... Uh, a carrier oil as well as the almond oil for any of these essential oils. So if you want to dilute the essential oil down, you will use this as your base and put a few drops of these essential oils in there, and then you can use it as a massage oil on your body or whatever. Okay, I will be getting a big bottle of this. So uh, actually jojoba oil mimics the same type of oil that we have on our skin called sebum. And this is very ex excellent for, for sensitive skin or baby skin. Oh, so that's my FYI has having worked with those oils. And those are two oils I use all the time. Uh, they're great makeup removers. And uh, I mix them sometimes with castor oil as a makeup remover, 50-50. Okay, I guess I've talked long enough here, longer than I thought. I hope this hasn't been confusing. Um, I just wanted to show you some of my solvents and give you a reasoning of why or why not I will be using certain solvents from now on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there was a person that gave me a shout out, a comment one time, and I don't know who she was on my uh, channel about using mineral spirits. And she was the one that said use spike lavender. And I don't know who she is, but uh, there's a shout out to her because because of that, I started looking at spike lavender. You can go on to jerrysartarama.com and they have a whole printout on 
these ascent the spike lavender and rosemary oil they sell them there for art supplies so anyway i just want to thank you for stopping by i'm going to re-listen to this video and if i make sense i'll publish it and if i think i'm off the base i won't so today is a busy day we're getting closer to christmas hope that you have time to uh, get your shopping done and everything you need to do and have some time for coloring. And until we meet again, I want to say thank you for stopping by and happy coloring.